when we attach this animation modifier to a view, SwiftUI will automatically animate any changes that happen to that view using the default animation whenever the value we're watching changes. Now in practice, this default animation is an ease in, ease out animation, which means iOS will start the animation slow, make it pick up speed, and then slow down as it approaches the end. It's a very nice default choice. However, we can control the type of animation it's animating with, the way it moves around on the screen, by passing in different values to this modifier here. For example, we could say explicitly I want an ease out speed. Start fast, then slow down to a smooth stop. Still watching animation amount. Now if you're curious, uh, implicit animations always have to watch a particular value, in our case animation amount. Um, otherwise, animations will be triggered for every small change. Even like rotating from portrait to landscape would be a change and it would animate the movement from there. It would look quite strange. Anyway, so we have now ease out. So start fast and slow down at the end. There are even spring animations that cause the movement to kind of overshoot where you asked for and return to settle at its actual target. Now you can control things like the initial stiffness of the spring, like its initial velocity when the spring is released, um, how fast the animation should be damped, i.e. Uh, should it slow down really slowly or slow down for a very, very, very long time eventually settling? It's down to you. You make it back and forth bounce as not much as you want. For example, we could say uh, I would like our animation to be an interpolating spring with stiffness of 50 and a damping of 1. And I'll go ahead and press Command R now and we'll see a spring effect happening now with our blur and grow. So you get that kind of effect. It's damping very slowly, so it's still kind of gently rocking back and forth. We can go higher and higher again and higher. And I'll just interpolate that through. That's interpolating spring. It adds them together very nicely. For more precise control, we can actually customize the animation with a duration specified as a number of seconds. So we could say, uh, I want to have uh, uh, ease in out animation, like the default animation, that lasts for exactly two seconds. So I'd say I want to have uh, ease in out with a duration of two. So it lasts for that long. Don't go to the default speed. I want exactly that speed. And now we'll see sort of a very slow animation like that. Now, when we're saying ease in, ease out, duration two like this, we're actually making an instance of an animation struct that has a whole own set of modifiers. And so we can actually attach modifiers to ease in, out, duration two to get other effects. For example, let's, let's add a bit of spacing here so it's easier to read. Let's say that. We could say I want ease in, out with dot delay of one second. So the same two second animation, but wait one second first before launching it. And so I press tap me and nothing will happen and it'll move up over two seconds. Again, press it, wait, moves up. We can also ask the animation to repeat a certain number of times and even make it bounce back and forward by setting auto reverses to be true. And so we could say I want a uh, one second animation that will bounce up and down before reaching its final state. Let you ease in out duration one with a repeat count of three, but auto reverses, reverses of true. So up, down, up, down, up, down, uh, so it goes back and forward. Uh, it is complaining, I'm missing a comma here, there we go. So I now press play and it bounces up down, up, like that and stays there. I'll do up, down, up, there we go. So it's repeating it th three times, up, down, up, three, three movements, up, down, up, there we go. If you've done exactly uh, two, have a look at this, it's perhaps unexpected. We've got repeat count two now, it's gonna go up, down, and jump back to be up. Uh, now this is because ultimately the button must 
match the state of our program. And we've added one to this as the final scale effect value must be two. And regardless of what animations we apply, that means when it finishes, it must end up with a scale of two. Uh, and so it jumps around a little bit. So be careful with your repeat count there. For continuous animations, there is actually a repeat forever modifier. We could say uh, easy and out duration one, repeat forever. I'll do auto versus true again, like that. And now it will keep on going forever and ever and ever. It just won't stop bouncing up and down and blurring at the same time. Here we go. If that's the effect you want. Now, actually, this is really helpful when combined with the on appear modifier because we can make animations that start immediately and continue moving for the life of the whole view. So to show this off, I want to go ahead and make some changes here. We're going to uh, remove the animation here from the button itself. I instead use it with an overlay modifier, a new modifier, which draws views over the previous view at the same size. And we can make a sort of pulsating circle effect with the overlay. The first things first, uh, I'm going to, uh, after the clip shape, say there is an overlay. And our overlay will be a circle stroked in the color red with a scale effect of animation amount and opacity of two minus animation amount. So we've got a stroked red circle that'll scale up as the thing goes higher and higher, um, but we'll get transparent over time. So opacity, transparency here, uh, a value of one means fully opaque. You can see it fully in it. A value of zero means fully transparent. So what we're saying is when animation amount is one, two minus one means it's fully opaque, as you'd expect. It'll go down to, uh, oh, sorry, animation amount goes up to two, sorry, it'll be two minus two, which is fully transparent. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove scale effect and blur effect from the main button itself. I'm also gonna comment out this animation amount change. It isn't actually gonna change it when a button's pressed because we don't wanna change it by hand anymore. We want to do it when the view is shown. I also want to take this animation modifier we have already and move it from there onto our circle like that. And finally, I'm gonna change auto reverses to be false. So it'll go to, from beginning to end, beginning to end like that. It won't, it won't animate from beginning to end, end to beginning like that. So now we're animating the circle, but there's no way it's setting it when the button's pressed anymore. That's been commented out. So instead, we're gonna say there is an on appear modifier and we'll do animation amount uh, uh, equals two. So it goes between one and two. That's what we're asking for now. And remember, we've got this repeat forever modifier here without auto reversing. And so what will happen is our overlay circle should scale up and fade out continuously like that. Boom. A really, really lovely effect, I think. And, and not a lot of work. I mean, given how little work that is, I think it's a remarkably attractive effect.